but it's swap i gotta put the dct neutral so i'm just gonna go ahead and use this uh socket which one is it a four millimeter and pretty much you pop up the trim and then in the corner see what that red tab looking thing is right there you go ahead and stick this into it and then turn so this is how it will seat so you just put it in there and then you just go ahead and turn this way but we're not going to turn there yet so you turn it in counterclockwise i'll just put the key in and push it one time accessory as you can see it's in park so i'm about to turn it right now and see it switched over to neutral like so so now all that is is just turning it as you can see but you got to turn it more until you hear it snap and you'll snap to stay in neutral so now as you see it is in neutral now fully so it's staying neutral so i started from the handle from out right here and then ended up right here so that's where it is right now so what i'm gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and pull the negative wire and pretty much turn the whole car off that could start the whole process of removing this engine but if you were like stuck trying to get on a tow truck bed or something like that this is all you have to do with it you can go ahead and move the car or whatever but since i need to take a battery out not, not take this battery out but disconnect the power and all that this is how you got to do it to keep it in neutral or you could go underneath the car and you see that lever just go ahead and pull it and it'll pretty much put it in neutral so it's in a neutral position right now so that's how it's supposed to look So I've gone to the back and I already loosened this negative wire already and pull it off. I'm gonna tuck this up over here so it doesn't go back and hit it or nothing like that. And we're good to go. This thing is a beast. Like it pretty much took out this whole panels, that side. And went ahead and took out the other side also so this side is loosened up so i just need to take off the bumper right now and we'll be good to go take the headlights things of that nature the main thing is just take this whole clip off one thing i noticed it got like a coolant cooler over here and the oil cool over here so the is's are man this is what they should have came from from the factory for the regular eyes so yeah that's a nice little upgrade right here think about retrofitting something like that on mines but yeah, I love this thing. I'm like, what have I been doing with my life? I've been using power tools. I'm over here getting buffed and ripped with freaking hand tools. So, so far I pretty much have the bottom tray off, those sides off, the fan, and I drained the oil already. So I just need to go ahead and drain the coolant. So this did the front bumper, so it's off right now. That's in the corner. So, just those typical screws right here, these four plus the two at the side, um, came off. And yeah, so one thing I had to worry about was just taking off these clips for the parking sensors. So, there's four of them one, two, three, four. So, when you take it off, just make sure it's go back there. It's just like a little clip. So, push it in, pull up, and you'll be good to go when it comes right out on some cars you got to take off more stuff such as the headlight washer nozzles and stuff like that but i run again on this one it's just those my car which has no options like that so it's just pretty much straight bolt off so i'm gonna go ahead and start taking out the light right now so these two bolts plus i believe one over here in the corner so i'm gonna take the headlights out and actually first i'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect them so let's push those tabs here plug them out Push that tab here, plug it out, and we're good to go. Look out the screw right up in here. So I took that screw out, and these up here I went ahead and loosened, but I didn't fully take them off just in case so that the headlight doesn't fall off. So now that I'm up here, I could just go ahead and take these out by hand and just go ahead and pull the headlight right out. And one thing I just noticed, I was like looking at, and I noticed that up here, this setting right here, I put on that one what it does it has breakaway power on high and when it feels this no resistance it just slowly backs the bolt out compared to being on lower high which always was me going back and forth so it's like an automatic setting and it's like been working beautifully 
So man, this has been like a lifesaver. I love this thing. Lights took a whole lot longer than I thought it would be. So it's pretty much bolts, bolts here, two here in the side, and then one in the back of the uh, light to take it off. But over here, you're gonna see this like, once you get all those bolts off, it would not come off. So I finally found it was just like this bracket that it's on. So you just pop it off and it comes right out. So the only way to see it is not until you remove the duck in which is just these screws back in the back of it. These three screws that come on the back of the coolers. So one, two, and then over here in the corner, right there. So I took it off and then I was able to see it and you could have access to this bracket right here. So just pop it off and this thing will come right out. So each BMW 335 variant and whatever IS, 135, 335, E90, E92 is like, it's like different ways of taking off the lights. So this is the first time doing it on one of these. And yeah, that's how you do it. All right, so now with the lights are all out, I'm gonna go ahead and pretty much drain the coolant. So I'm gonna go ahead and do is remove the intercooler. This one is stock. And pretty much you just pull back these right here. They shouldn't pull off all the way, just a little bit. So it should look more like this one. But here it became overzealous and it popped all the way off. But it's easy to come back and push on. So it'll pull out like so. So this is out. And then the same also for open here. So I still gotta push this out a little bit more and then turn these tap turn these tabs and then drops right out. Oh yeah, and you also gotta take these screws out right here. This one and this one right here. So you see them at the ends. So once those are pulled off, those clips right here moved, take these off and comes right out. So it's good to have like a jack stand underneath here to hold it up so that it doesn't fall on you. But this is pretty light. So I doubt that'll happen. Just give me a fair warning though once you're taking these bolts out. All right, so the cooler is out and had to sweep it up a little bit. A lot of dirt and stuff is under here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen this up right here and get Ugh. Ugh. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen this up right here and let the coolant drain out. So once it's drained out, I could remove the radiator. I just connect these hoses, take out the radiator. Then I could finish taking off the front clip from the radiator and pretty much screwed it out. And that's what came out the radiator. That doesn't look like BMW cooling to me, but yeah, it's draining. So. Once that's drained, finished draining, I'm gonna put that plug back into the radiator to caulk it. So go ahead, pull this piece off. So I'm gonna take off the upper radiator holes, but I'm only loosening it on this end right here. And I'm gonna loosen this bottom feed right here also. So it's the same principle, pull the clip out and then push down on it. So I'm gonna leave this part connected. So the upper radiator holes, this arm over here and here will be attached to the radiator when I pull it out and then I'm gonna take off those bottom pieces right here connectors at the bottom the lower hoses on the radiator and the one over here have this side taken off upper radiator hose and this piece right here disconnected from the reservoir these two hoses are disconnected this one that one and down there the oil cooler not oil transmission cooler line is disconnected off the radiator so all I pretty much has to do is just pretty much lift this out now so before I do that I'm gonna go ahead and these and open up these tabs right here to loosen it up and there's two of them one here and then one right here so once that's out then I can easily just pull out the so the radiator is out, so I just have this piece out right here. So the top vent holes, the little bracket piece right here, and then pretty much left everything on, upper radiator hose part. So now that's out, so pretty much you'll be able to take off the front clip now, this whole black piece. So one thing I wanna do is just disconnect this right here. I already disconnected it, and all you have to do is pretty much pop this, I think it's this way, yeah, pop 
pop this up, pull this out, and you can close it back if you want. But this part would be actually pull it up also. It's like these little brackets. Pull them up and it'll go along with this part. But first, we're gonna have to like disconnect the horn and the temp sensors. Go ahead, take this off and make sure the wires are like off towards the body. And we're just gonna go ahead and take off these four. One, two, three, and one down there. And then one, two, three, four. And then this piece right here could come off. Now that these bolts are all out, one, two, three, four, uh, have the horn disconnected. Uh, make sure to get the ambient ten temperature sensor over here on plug and remove the wire that was running across here. Uh, Flip it over to the side. I'm gonna tuck it underneath the car so I don't step on it or anything and break any of the sensors. These are also taken off and horn sensor also. So all that's left now is to go ahead and take these two bolts here and then these two bolts over here. Then we can go easily take this piece off right here. The front clip is off now. That'll put it over here to the side. So all the parts so far for the front. So, this is how it looks right here. So, the only thing right now I got left to do is just disconnect this holes right here. Since the IS, I gotta go ahead and I'm gonna pull it over. I'm gonna disconnect this and just have it come out with the engine. So, this part will come out with the engine. Uh, for the new motor, uh, most likely I'm just gonna have to go ahead and transfer this hose over to the new motor. And while I'm transferring everything over, like the turbos and stuff, so yeah, this is gonna come out with the engine. So leaving this all connected right here. All right, so have it disconnected now. A little bit of coolant came out. So let's put that bucket over there to catch it. But yeah, this is gonna come out with the car. So leaving it right here. And what we're gonna do now is just go ahead and take these AC lines off this bracket. Cause technically you want this behind it because this is staying on the car and this is coming out. So when we pull the motor up so that this doesn't get snagged, just push this behind there. But it ain't really important right now. It's just when we have the car hooked up, just to remember about this part right here so that we lift the motor over it. And since this is a DCT or even automatic, this lines right here, I didn't forget about it. It's, pretty much mention it now but later on we're just gonna have to loosen up these screws to loosen it off the block so this will stay on the car but this is screwed onto the block here in the middle i believe or i think there's two more screws underneath or maybe one but yeah you gotta take these screws off to get this thing to stay with the car and not come out with the motor oh yeah this lower charge pipe part fell off when i was taking off the front clip so yeah inconsequential but yeah you can take it off whenever you want it's it really doesn't even matter but right now i'm gonna go ahead and um the front is pretty much taken care of so all we gotta do now is start taking off this part so generally all that top piece should have been been off already and have it down to just the valve the engine cover so take these screws off right here take this piece off and then I'm gonna take off the intake manifold and DCI, actually take the DCIs, take the intake manifold off the charge pipe and then go down to the starter and pretty much take the starter out. Engine cover is off now. So all we gotta do now is just take these DCIs off. Uh, could easily just take off the front inlet off and just pull it out as one, but I'm just gonna go ahead and take it all off. So take this one off here and then that one right there. So the DCRs are now gone. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take the charge pipe off. All I gotta do is lift this clip up right here, but I uh, have to take the sensor off. So all you gotta do is just pull down on it. Like not hard, but just like a little, give it a little tug and it'll come right off. So something like that. So it's off use this BMW flathead side and wow <laughs> pop that off and just 
take this off right here. This line right here. So either you can take it off here from the blow off valve or from here on the intake manifold side. But they have a zip tie on it, so I'm gonna leave it there and just take it off from this side. So hopefully it just pulls off and yeah. So this part is going with the motor. Or not the motor, but actually with the intake manifold once I take it off. So gotta go down there, find the clip and take this off and put it on there. So we'll keep everything together. Clip, found the clip, put the clip back on. And yeah, it's gonna put these piece together and put them over to the side over there, stockpile. So now all we gotta do is pretty much go ahead and take off the intake manifold. Go ahead and grab all these bolts right here. Crisscross them all the way to the back. So I'll take those off and then the intake manifold should pop right off and it should be like a little black box here that you just knock off that way, like hit it. So I'm just gonna take that part off, knock it off, and then this piece will come right out. Actually, first let me take this sensor out. So same deal, lift that clip up a little bit and pop that right out. And let me see. Yeah, that should be it. That should be fine. Bolts right here taken out. So all I gotta do now is go down here and disconnect the power for the actuator here. So it's like a squeeze button and you just pull it out and it comes right out. And the same thing over here for this it's a hard line, but it's, it's a squeeze tab. You squeeze it, it's a vacuum line, and you just pull it right off. And back here, you should feel like a black box thing, some solid hold it onto it. So you only gotta deal with it until you pull it back some more, and then you can easily knock it out. So, piece I'm talking about looks more like this. So that's how it's gonna look. And you just pull it off the sensor piece. And then over here, that's the vacuum line. So you squeeze and take it off that nipple piece. And yeah, the black thing I'm telling you about underneath it, it slides onto this little peg thing right here. So it has some a dimple in here. That's what catches onto it. So you just gotta knock it this way off. The connector off and the vacuum lines off. We could go ahead and disconnect the oil pressure sensor. So push down and off. It comes off. Uh, it's actually easier than it should be. There we go. So that's out the way, and now you could just pretty much pull the intake manifold this way. Now we have the intake manifold back. Pretty much on um, twin turbo cars. I'm not even. I was even forgot completely about this, but the rear inlet might be in the way a little bit. So make sure I push it back, and it'll give you some more room to pull it back out. But right here, you could clearly see that piece I was telling you about. So you just knock it back and it'll come right off. And then the whole thing comes out. Right now with intake manifold out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and take off the starter. So I'm gonna use this 13 and take this bolt off right here first. So this is loose now. I went ahead and put the screw back on here so I don't lose it and push down on this clip and pull this piece off right here. So the only thing left to take the starter off is this bolt right here and the bolts over here. Pretty much it's threaded over on this side of the engine so it's a pain in the butt to deal with this bolts right here on this back side but yeah this one's a little bit easier so i use this e14 with a swivel and pretty much have it down here and then pretty much loosened it so i have it loosened up halfway so i'm just gonna use it we're loosening it up by hand and then i'm gonna go ahead and go tackle this back one all right so i'm using a 3 8 it's a pretty much a small stubby one and pretty much I'm gonna use this one to take off that rear bolt back here. So technically you could take it off with the transmission, running the extensions up like that, but I just like to get to this one's up here at the top. And pretty much this method, method has worked for me pretty good. So it's pretty much, let's see, stick this back here. And then you turn it to the right, right. So the way I'm standing facing towards the car, my right right now. So turn it to the right. So since the bolts are the opposite direction, it's not lefty loosey or righty tidy, it's righty loosey, lefty tidy. So uh, I go ahead, push this back here like that. And then I go ahead and use a smaller jack handle and uh, stick it back here. So pretty much I just pull it out a little bit so that the bolt won't go all the way out that way so it's more over here so i have still have the room to go ahead and turn it 
So yeah, as you loosen it, just pull it out forward towards you and then keep going. So that way you still have that little piece right here space because if it goes all the way out like that, then you ain't gonna have no room to turn it. So the starter is out and we're pretty much wrapped up for day one. So I only had about like three hours or so into this right now. So yeah, tomorrow we're pretty much gonna tackle the fuel system. So all it is is just pretty much disconnecting that and having it off to the engine. So the fuel supply will be cut off from the motor and disconnect the power steering and the AC compressor off the engine. And then we'll move over to this side and then we can finally disconnect the transmission and then remove the motor mounts and disconnect the exhaust from the downpipe and we should be good to go. So new day today, so I only got about 30 minutes or so to work on this today. So pretty much what I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, remove the fuel line from off the motor. So normally you could use a special tool and like push this in right here and take, take it off and that should be fine. But I don't have that tool right now and I don't wanna break that clip. So I'm just gonna use a 17 and actually first you have to disconnect the high pressure fuel pump push these tabs pull them out give it more room and then use a 17 and yeah loosen it so once you loosen it just pull it you can't pull it off yet you actually got to go here and disconnect this line right here not a line disconnect this bolt all right so i have this piece loosened up right now so yeah it could back up so i have this part loosened up right now so i also have a e12 on that bolt right here that secures the line to the block so I'm using e12 to go ahead and remove this off right now all right so it's loosened up right now and put the bolt back into the block so that don't misplace it or anything so here is where people normally should go ahead and start like labeling stuff well if you already disconnected it from here you don't have to worry about disconnecting these wires right now so yeah i have to since this part's gonna be staying with the car and yeah i'm just gonna ahead and disconnect this so normally i just go ahead and label them so i know where exactly where the wires go on and assembling back but the thing about bmws is once the everything is in place the wires are just enough length so you could tell exactly where it goes and also some of them is like uh one size fits just that particular socket so it's pretty hard to mess mess up or confuse where things go so we're done with this section for now uh later on i'm gonna have to go ahead and tuck this more over to the side like route it back down this way to clear the motor when it's coming out so pretty much gonna go ahead and loosen the tensioner so i can take the belt off but the weird thing is this is in the way i completely forget because i haven't worked on much stock in fours in a while so yeah i'm after what is this a t60 to go ahead and push there and just loosen it up and i'm after to loosen these two right here with a what is this a t30 so loosen these so this could come out more so i get more room to put the bolt socket in all right so now with these loosened up this has enough room right now to get up in there so it's there currently so all i gotta do is just now pull it to the right and it's loose so it's loose now so i'm just gonna go ahead and snake out the belt right now the belt is now off so i'm just gonna go ahead and take off the power steering pump right now so it's an E12, and it looked like it was like a lot of leak down here. So I'm not really sure where the leak was coming from. It must have been the oil filter housing gasket leaking and it cleaned up here, but not down here. Or it could just be the oil pan, but we'll see once we pull it out. So it's two bolts here, E12s, one here, one here. Hope you can see it, these dark spots right here with the grease on them. So there and there, and then in the back, so you go on the wheel well area and you look up and you see it right here. 
So let me come out a little bit. You can see where I'm looking from. So right between the tie rod arms and the sway bar, you look up and you can see it up in here. So both of the bolts are out now. Uh, I just went ahead and set them aside until I dropped the power stand and I just screwed them back in for safekeeping. But for the last bolt in the rear, you pretty much got to use that same socket, but you could get to it from down here. So loosen it this way. And this is how you can see it from the bottom. So yeah, it's easy to get to it from up top. All right, so now with those three bolts off, the power steering is pretty much loose. So you're just gonna stick it off to the side and it's just gonna rest just like that. And as you can see, the motor just comes right out. So you don't gotta deal with none of those power steering lines, draining it, nothing of the sort like that. Now we gotta loosen the AC compressor. So pretty much it's three screws also. So one is right, what's that? Down here, this one. And then as you can see right there here, the second one, and then right below it, let me see if I can get a good angle. Right here is the third one. So they're 13 millimeters. Uh, they're pretty easy to take off. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Just go ahead and take them off. So I was able to loosen two of the bolts, the one here and one down there. But then the one on the side right here is best to use one of these. So yeah, I use this and it's more room and you get better leverage to go ahead and take this off. So have the power steering pump down here. The AC compressor is now loosened up. So pushed off to the side. It's gonna stack just like this. So it stays right here with the engine bay while the whole motor comes out. So the only thing we have left right now is just to disconnect this harness right here. The brown and white wire connector. Just push those and pull it apart. And the AC compressor will now be officially removed. So power steering and AC compressor are off to the side. It's disconnected from the harness. So right here. So all we gotta do now is push this in, lift this up, how that moved out the way. And then back here, I think here it is, the other line vacuum that was hooked up to the intake manifold. Just disconnect this piece right here. And yeah, this tucks off to the side. The only thing we have left right here on this side is just the engine uh, mounts. So this whole bracket right here, you gotta come out, plus that ground strap. So other than that, that's the only thing really left on this side. And then, yeah, now we just gotta move over to this side over here. Now we just gotta go ahead and remove this line right here. So we're not really removing the whole line, we're just removing the connection that goes into the, I believe it's a thermostat. So if you go over to the corner, so you can see better the hose I was talking about. So right here, it's disconnected off. Uh, make sure to go ahead and put like a bucket on the knee because a little bit of coolant might come out. So don't want to drench the whole place. But yeah, there you can see it. So I went ahead and right now I'm gonna disconnect the reservoir so i went ahead and popped this up already with the flathead so all you gotta do is just wiggle it off and take it off and yeah this will be disconnected i was thinking of leaving the reservoir in the car but i think i'm gonna take it out the main reason why is because it's plastic and then when taking the motor in and out i don't want it to hit it and crack it and then that's like another expense i have to go deal with so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and take it out but disconnecting that part right now so the coolant reservoir holes down there is giving me some trouble trying to take off. So I uh, don't want to pull too hard and break the tabs off. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip ahead real quick and move these uh, boost vacuum canisters out the way. So it's just a th two 13 millimeters, one here, and then another underneath here. So I'm going to go ahead and take those off and then just pull them off to the side. Actually, let me just remove these lines from off of here. So I'm not disconnecting them or anything like that. I'm just gonna pop them right there on the motor and they're gonna come right out with the engine. So that way I don't gotta pretty much worry about which one goes to what and all that other good stuff. So now these are loose, so I'm just gonna go ahead and prop them over to the side like so. 
And this one has the piece over here, the brackets in the way. So I'm just gonna unplug it. So you just pull down on it and then move it over and then I'm gonna plug it back in. So now these are tucked over to the side. So now I have enough room to go ahead and wiggle this piece out. All right, so this is now off and out the way, canisters off to the side. So all I gotta do is use a 10 millimeter socket and take these two bolts off and then we could go ahead and push this out. So there'll be a sensor connected to it. So be careful as you're taking it out. So as you're lifting it, go ahead, reach your hand down and unplug the sensor. So I pull up and have this off to the side. And here's the sensor I was talking about. So just push down here and pull up. There you go. Off to the side and just go stick this somewhere. Let me see if any coolant comes out first before I... None in there. So go ahead and put it with a stockpile of other stuff. So now off to the DME box. So in the lock position, move these over to the unlock position. You can see them unlock, lock lock on lock so just put in the corresponding direction and then i just use a flathead and pull these up right here that one and back here so once those are up you go ahead and just pull this thing right off all right so it should pull up like so and all you're really doing is just pushing in on where is this at these tabs right here so you just go ahead and push in and it'll come right up so we have the cover off now. So all we're gonna do pretty much is pretty much disconnect the harness from the DME. So we're gonna have to head and lift these up right here, pop these out. So you're pretty much just simply just lifting up on them like so. Cause, so the main thing we're trying to do is just take what harness wires that are connected to the motor and just bring them over with the engine. Or if you ever wanted to, you could just disconnect all the harness wires from the sensors, uh, pop this piece off, bring it over to here like that, and you just pull the motor off straight. But I'd rather just take this whole part off and do everything on off the car when I'm switching over the wires and stuff to the new motor. So the first wire we're gonna pay attention to is this one. So right here, we're just gonna go ahead and pull up, have this out like so. And then here you see this black uh, tab push it in this way and it pulls right up so that's over to the side and then over here a battery terminal just go ahead and pop this off it comes right off all right so you use a 13 millimeter on here and a 10 millimeter on this one right here so it's gonna take these both off and once they're off put the screw back in to here so we don't lose them all right, so we're gonna go ahead and pull the DME up. So all you gotta do is really just pull these tabs in right here, out this way, and pull up. So hold the tabs and pull up, and you'll get enough room to go ahead and start playing with the sub connectors. So there's two sub connectors, one here, and the latch piece over here. So all you gotta do is pretty much pull it back, and it'll slide off and unhook, and you just pull up. So you pull out this far and then you just pull all up and it'll come right off. So it's pretty much hanged on to these hinges right here and you just pop it over to the side. So we're gonna do the same thing to this one right here. But on this one, as you see, it's hooked up to the body of the car. So we're gonna have to split apart the harness and get down into it to get this piece out. But yeah, we're pretty much gonna do the same thing. Pull this out and unhook it. All right, so we have that connector off now so both sides are off so now we're gonna go over here to this other back part uh, I went ahead and did the same thing pull this up out so you can get some more room and we're gonna pretty much disconnect any of them that's coming off this loom right here so that'll be this one this one and this black one right here in the back and this one right here this clear opaque white looking one so this is all disconnected now so as you can see these could go over to the side to the body of the car and then this side comes out with the harness so luckily everything is color coded so it's pretty much easy to go back in and the only thing left if you pull these over to the side 
everything right here is going with the motor so the only thing left is just this piece right here that we have to remove so all we got to do is pull this part out completely and i'll show you real quick once i pull it out where to remove it from so to remove that connector piece from the harness i pretty much use a pen so i stick it into this hole right here and push down this way and the same thing right here but the main thing while i'm doing that i'm pulling right here with a little bit of pressure while i'm doing it and it'll just pop right up okay so once that's fully off now so you're gonna go ahead and use your pen or whatever and push this over to the side while pulling this way towards you and you'll pop right out so everything is now separated so yeah we're good to go so this part's on that side and so and this side is over here so the only thing is before you even take everything apart just take a picture or video of all the wires so you know exactly where they are when you put them back together because sometimes different cars the wiring looks a little bit different so especially between model uh years so one of the last thing i noticed i forgot is i didn't disconnect the ground right here so i gotta disconnect that and i think i'm gonna take off this strut tower bracket uh you could leave it but i think i'm just gonna go ahead and take it off just so that you have enough room while i'm pulling it out so technically you could take it out without it but since the valve cover is plastic pretty much uh might as well just take it off just for peace of mind so all you gotta use is a 10 millimeter socket and take this ground wire off so i'm gonna take the bolts off and then put the bolt back onto the thread so we don't lose the bolts so here it is off i'm about to put it back on the bolt back on there so here i'm gonna use a big flathead and turn it and it comes right out so like it was already turned i don't know i didn't turn it but yeah you're gonna see another socket in here like so and then one here so we're gonna use an e14 and pretty much pop this off right here so this is loose now and i went ahead and loosened this side too i'm just gonna take both sides out give me a whole lot more clearance and I use a 9 16th socket because I don't have the a size big enough for that one. So all you gotta do is just loosen it a little bit. You don't gotta take the whole bolts off. So you just loosen it and then now you can like wiggle these off. Like so. There you go. So got everything separated and have this side all the way over. So everything is pretty much set to go on this side. So same over here. I checked everything. Everything is clear. But one other thing is you see this uh, the automatic transmission cooler or the DCT cooler in this instance is needs to be separated from the block. So under here there is a small 10 millimeter screw so you just got to go ahead and just loosen that off and this part right here will stay with the car so you don't got to disconnect no um none of the fluids gonna leak out or anything like that for the transmission so yeah just gotta disconnect that one 10 millimeter bolt so now you see it's loose and disconnected from the block so right when we pull the block out it's not gonna pull it up with it so yeah, everything is done on this whole top side of the engine. So technically the only thing holding this thing in now is just the uh, motor mounts over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those out last. So once I have everything bolted up, ready to pull, I'll go ahead and loosen these up and then we could pull it out. So tomorrow I'm gonna go ahead and do the underneath the car. So all that entails is pretty much removing the downpipe from the exhaust and loosening the transmission bolts all the way around and disconnect some harness wires so other than that uh we're pretty much 96 percent finished right now so now we're ready to go and tackle underneath the car so i want to disconnect the transmission 
and I noticed that I forgot one thing and that was that I didn't disconnect here the oil cooler so you can either go ahead and disconnect it from here but I'm just gonna disconnect it from this point right here and it's just a 13 millimeter and loosen it pull it off and put it off to the side and that's it so this is like one point where you could just go ahead and remove it easier so I'm just gonna get a rag and put some right there cuz I think some oil might drip down it's been leaked out before um, from the drain plug beneath but I know there's got to be some still up in here so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and and that was right I pull it down I had a rag right here and pretty much caught all the oil so it doesn't spill and mess up the floor so I gotta go clean it up again but yeah it's gonna let it drip a bit and then move this over to the side so it'll clear the motor so the whole part right here is situated with this uh, oil cooling line so right back here uh, before I go and start getting off all these transmission bolts off uh, what I like to do is we already got the starter one out right over here but we could also get this one right here in the corner so I don't have that particular fit in so it's best I just go ahead and use one of these it's 11 millimeter and notice it has all these grooves around it so it pretty much helps in taking this off so I just go ahead and put this over here use a jack handle and move it to the right and that will just pretty much go ahead and free this up so something like this is what I do so it look like that and I just go ahead and use that as leverage and crack it open also once we have that other screw out there loose we could go ahead and loosen this one right here uh right here where this black thing is you'll see a screw so i already started taking it off and it's pretty much i use a 9 16 and use this side and just pop it to the right just like this side so those are all that i could take off from up top and the rest i'm gonna have to deal with from at the bottom all right so we have that bolt out and i went ahead and just made a crude diagram and i say crude as in really crude it's yeah it's pretty much a mock-up of the transmission the back of it um shows a starter and pretty much the whole purpose is i go ahead and put the bolts in the spot where it's supposed to go so that way when i'm reassembling i could go ahead and um put the bolts back in the right order and know which bolt goes in what spot since each bolt is kind of different so drill circle here to account for the starter bolt which i left with the starter so i just made a note of that and yeah i just pretty much make a hole as i go around the whole thing and yeah that pretty much keeps my bolts in order so i have that one in the corner down here removed so that's all the bolts that can be removed from the top and yeah that's how we have it so far so we move this one from the front of engine bay, that from engine bay, this one from engine bay, and this I have over here with the starter over there. So the next one we have is just one here, I think one here, two down here, and one, two, and I think three, or two more. So pretty much all those gotta be done underneath the car. All right, so I went underneath the car and I went ahead and disconnected the downpipe bolts to loosen it from the exhaust. And I also went ahead and removed the O2 sensor wires out of the clips that are up here inside of the, that hook up to the transmission. So I disconnected those and I also went ahead and uh, disconnected the connections and marked them. So I just used some different type tape. So regular tape on that part, those match up. And then over here I have some electrical tape. You can barely see it, but I could tell the difference of which one is which. So yeah, I went ahead and disconnected that and also disconnected the transmission, not transmission, but the oil, what was it, oil level sensor right here. And went ahead and disconnected that. And also right here up here in the corner, you see this right here, that's the ground, ground strap that hooks up to the mount. So I have to go ahead and remove that one also and just let it hang and yeah it'll sit with the mount once the motor is out so it's a 13 millimeter so i'm just gonna go ahead and remove that so that's the only thing i have left to do uh right now you don't really have to go ahead and disconnect these but i just want to disconnect them so it could help clear it but you can leave it on and just watch it as you're taking it out so that's the only thing you really don't really have to disconnect but i just went ahead and just did it now because when i go ahead and 
take the down pipes and all that stuff to transfer to the new motor. Uh, this is one step I'd have to do already, mark them and disconnect them. So might as well just do it right now. All right, so I'm about to go take off the next bolt. And as you can see, I have the socket all the way up there running on a swivel with a long couple extensions connecting out to here. That's pretty much how I route it right above all the way down. And I'm gonna use a jack handle right here to give me some leverage to break it free. This is actually a good time to grab this because we're gonna go ahead and put it inside this hole right here. So let's take it, screw it in, because this is where we're gonna string our chain through so that we could go ahead and pull the motor out. So it's the anchor point. So it'll go here and through here and then pretty much lift it out like so. So if most likely you're gonna have it inside your trunk. So if you go, yeah, over here in your battery compartment, if you go ahead and lift this up, you should see it right here in this part. If you don't have it, shoot, I need to go find one. So with that, that's a 15 millimeter I used to go ahead and take this bolt off. So third one, so I'm just gonna stick it right here. So we're gonna have one here one over here and then right up into the top right there those three use the same socket so and they're pretty easy to get to so i'm just gonna take those three out right now so i use the e10 socket and i got those three out and yeah this is how it should look right now so i still got a few more to go before the transmission is fully disconnected from the engine okay so if you look right here i see these three bolts so i'm just gonna go ahead and take those three out right now so one here and two right there all right so i had those three bolts out now so i checked and only have one left and that's like pretty much all the way at the top so it's almost as if you're trying to get at this one right here it's the same level of difficulty to reach it except this time we have the what's it called the down pipes in the way but you can maneuver around that as long as you have a swivel head socket so there's supposed to be 11 bolts in total so we got one and then here to start the one we got over to the side so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then eleven so it's the last one holding everything in place with the motor and the transmission so right up there it's pretty hard to see but i was trying to focus but yeah that's the bolt up there so you got to use a bunch of extensions just like the left hand side and you should be able to get to it so I'm gonna go ahead and take that out right now. Okay, so this is pretty much how far back I ran my extension. So this is the farthest back I have to go. And that's it sitting. But yeah, I got it loose right now. So I'm just gonna take the bolts out and put a jack underneath the transmission to keep it in place. So we have all of them out right now, all 11. And pretty much this is all the extension that's needed. Uh, pretty much was it 10 20 30 30 inches of it straight so yeah um for each of them like i know this one is a it's a 15 mil and these goes for this is a 15 this is a 15 i use and this is a 15 that's a 15 also and so is this one so pretty much these three here is 15s, and then these two right here is 15s. This particular one is a, what was it, E14. So E14 here, E14 there, and that's it. And then down here, we have a E10. So E10, 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 and yeah, that's it. So all you need is a E10, a E14, and a 15. If you don't have it, the frick. This thing just come fly up in here on me. Damn Florida. Uh, All right, so I have my jack underneath there supporting the transmission. I have my uh, engine hoist over here hooked up. Got this bolted in. Got the other piece hooked up to where that starter um, piece would come through so that's all hooked up right now so the only thing holding this whole everything together right now is just the engine mounts and the bracket so on this side i'm gonna remove the brackets so it's gonna be these two bolts here and another two bolts on the other side and then this bolt down here 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the bracket right now and should have enough room to go ahead and pull everything out. So the main thing is just to remove this bracket. All right, so I have the mount out right now. And as you can see, you got the ground scrap. That's the strap piece that we disconnected on the body of the car. So I used a 14 millimeter on these because I don't have the big size e -torx, uh size for this. So just use the 14 for it. And then for the top of the mount, I use a 16 millimeter. So that's a standard 16 mil. And yeah, I leave that part in the car, the driver's side, I leave that inside the car. And then now we're gonna move over to the passenger side. So I'm gonna remove the whole, pretty much bracket, everything's coming out with the motor also. All right, so I'm gonna use an E12, something like this. And we're pretty much gonna go ahead underneath the passenger side of the car. And underneath it, you're gonna see these two bolts sticking out. So here and up over here also. So we're just gonna remove both of those and that would be the only thing left holding the whole motor inside the car. All right, so I finished taking out those last two bolts on the passenger side mount. So it's just the bottom two bolts I took out, so the whole mount and bracket is coming out with it. So yeah, everything's disconnected off the car now, so we could easily just go ahead and lift it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift it out. It's only me here, so I'm gonna record this right now, so yeah. So in the process of pulling out the motor, this is why you should make sure to go ahead and check everything as you're pulling it out slowly. Uh, right here is one bolt I forgot that's holding on this, uh, the oil cooler line to the engine block. So I'm just gonna use a 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter loosen this up a little bit and just slide it off. And we should be good to go. And yeah, separation is already made. So I just need to just loosen this one up right here. All right, so now with the motor up and out, we could go ahead and get that last uh, connection and that's to the transmission. So if you look right here, that black thing right over here, all you have to do is just turn the tab to the right, this way, to the right, and up here, then pull back and it'll come right off. So yeah, just pull it all the way to the right and you hear like a suction noise or so, something like that. And then it comes right off. And then you just unhook it off the tabs and we're good to go. So everything now is disconnected and we can just go put the motor down now. Here's the empty engine bay. Uh, right there you see the jack is supporting the transmission. And yeah, I just need to like clean up inside here a bit. And also I gotta clean up the new motor also. So it only took me about eight hours or so combined over the span of a couple of days. So one person or even like two or three people helping could go ahead and get this thing in and out in like a few hours. So it's pretty straightforward. And since I took everything out, completely with uh, the motor, came out with the motor. Everything could be worked on easily, especially when you come over to the turbo side. So all these things that I have to use extensions, swivels, and all that other stuff just to get to, it's easily just zip, 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 and transfer it right over to the motor. So this motor is a little bit dirty, so I'm gonna have to go clean this up also. Thanks for watching, like, comment, and especially comment about like any suggestions and how to help speed this whole process up. So yeah, see y'all next video.